Hello everyone, Peter Hewitt, La Artistino. Welcome to part five of Colouring the Grasshopper. If you've been following along with me, you'll know there are four other parts to this video series. If you haven't seen them yet and you are interested in colouring this picture, I suggest you pop back and have a look at it from the first, where I explain how to plan your colouring. As before, we are using um, Summer Nut by Hannah Carlson or Summer Nights as it is printed in English and this is near the start of it I think it's the fourth picture in the book now in the previous videos we colored in the flowers the background the leaves and now we're up to the grasshopper so as you know we picked an original palette which I have I listed down here all of these colors and um, on top of that we have added other colors from the set uh, to complement um, the original selection, uh, mainly the May Green, I think, in the leaves as well, one of the primary ones that we added to this, and some of the yellows, etc. Now, we will get started on the grasshopper. Now, I have my little book here that I use to test colours in and plan the um, colour swatches so that I can um, see how things are going to look. I've got the main colours that I'm going to use, going to use set out here. Uh, I've got my erasers, a little Faber-Castell um, Extra Clean and Smooth. I prefer these erasers above all others. And uh, my Derwent Mechanical um, Eraser as well, which is really good for racing into the little, little corners. The colours that I have here are from my Polychromus set made by Faber Castell. As you can see, some of them are getting a little bit small. Um, they're well loved, these ones, which I add to um, other colours where um, from other sets like the Luminance pencil here. Or the, where's another one I've got hanging around? Uh, here we go, I do an artist pencil. I don't mind mixing and matching the sets up a little bit to get all the colours that I want. And uh, here's a demonstration of that here. I've got the Derwent Artist Water Green, which I'm using because it is much lighter than the Light Thylo Green, which is the other one, or the next one that I'm using. And then I have got the uh, Thylo Green and the Dark Thylo Green. These are very bluey, cool greens. And to contrast, I also use the May Green. Okay, I've also got, because I've coloured so much in here and I don't want to be rubbing the colours all around the place with the heel of my hand, I've got a scrap piece of paper here that I can put under my hand and protect um, the, uh, uh, the colouring from getting all smudged up. Okay, let's begin. Now, looking at this uh, grasshopper fellow here, he's quite complicated. There is a lot of patterning uh, done on his body, which is... Um, very typical of Hannah Carlson's style and it can be a bit confusing first to know where to put what colour and what you need to do is just break down the areas of where to put colour on, on this particular fellow. Now most creatures in nature and there is exceptions but most creatures have a lighter belly and a darker top so that which is natural because they um, uh, little things looking up see the lighter belly and confuse it with the sky and makes them a little bit more invisible and things looking down see the darker back and that confuses them with the ground which also helps with um, protecting them uh, very um, important for a little species like the grasshopper which is a favorite snack for birds so keeping in mind that the top part of the grasshopper will be darker and the bottom part the underneath will be lighter I'll be using the lighter colors here on the um, thorax and the abdomen area the tail area and um, the darker here colors on the head this sort of shoulder area and the wing covers here the wing covers are actually the grasshopper's second set of wings which has evolved into a harder cover to protect the first set of wings that sit underneath. That's why when they fly they flare these out so they can flap their wings. Uh, looking at this patterning here I'm going to ignore some of the lines and just colour over the top and use the lines that Hannah has put down as a texture and some of the patterns I'll actually go in and define and give the different colours to. So with the legs, I will start out, I think, with the lighter colour and make the darker colours in here with the patterning. So let's start out first with the lightest. That's the water green. And 
I will start colouring this outside area of the leg in the middle as I re go up to the top I'm going to make it darker and add in the darker thylo okay. and down this side as well and going around here too Do the same bit on this side as well. Now as I'm going to the end of the leg I'll start making it darker. So let's put the phyllo green here from the polychromis range. That first one was a Derwent pencil by the way if you're confused. Now if you do not have the Derwent water green use the thylo, the light thylo green but use it with white layer of the uh, the white pencil as well just to lighten it off a bit. There we go. Put that over the layer that over the top so that the uh, the lighter colour underneath has um, desaturated the top colour a little bit more. And then come up to the end. Okay, I've picked up the um, just the normal thylo green here, just to end. I'm only putting a light layer of that on top, okay? Because I don't want it to go too dark. And I've got the dark thylo green. Actually, no, I'll leave that out for now. I'll leave that, and I'll just put this in, blending it down the body. So you've got a nice smooth transition from the very lightest colour here going all the way up to the tip of his legs. I'll reserve the very darkest colours for towards the end I think. Now I'm going to do the same for the rest of the legs. Same sort of thing, lightest down the bottom going up through the light thylo green to the, um, the normal thylo green. So you've got three colours on this leg if you've got the um, the Derwent Artist and if you haven't got the Derwent Artist pencil you can use the white down the bottom to mix in a little bit with the light thylo. Around his leg here. I'm going to put a bit of shadow on that but I'll leave that till later so to make sure it looks pushed underneath that back leg there to so make it look like it's pushed underneath the body. I'll start, put a little bit on this hind limb here too, this, well not hind limb, this other leg that's behind. Okay, now we'll reach for our light phyllo, start popping that on top, getting darker as we go up. And the phyllo green right at the top. to that um, other leg, haven't I? There we go, let's do it now then. Lay in the lightest colour and go for your light phyllo. If you are using the white on this leg to lighten the light phyllo, don't forget even though you're going all the way down to the bottom with the white, you need to put a little fine soft layer of the light thylo all the way down to the bottom to the feet or the little grippy bits at the bottom of his legs. I don't know, do they call them feet when they're in grasshoppers? I guess they would do call them feet. Okay now Let's move on to his other legs and give him exactly the same treatment. But 
with the these legs I'll only go as far as just the light phyllo I think because they're a lot shorter Okay, now the next thing I think I might do is the head. I want the head and these, these body book bits to be the darkest, but um, again, I won't start with the darkest. I will just start with a lighter color and then introduce the darker colors later. Now, I'm going to make the base of the head down here a little bit lighter. So I've got the light by low green here, around where his mouth parts would be. And I'm just going to put a bit of a little bit right in the centre in between the lines going up towards his eye. Just softly, little circles. You don't want to see the strokes. So little circles. Okay, now I'm going to get, I think the, we'll go for the phyllo green and bring that in. And I'm going to push this around the outside. Again, I'm not really pressing very hard. I'm just letting the, the colour, gliding the pencil tip across the paper and letting the colour take. Just pushing a little bit into those corners though, but not too hard because I don't want to flatten the tooth because I'm planning to put another layer on top. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm going lighter as you go down. Don't worry if it's not too smooth yet, we've still got some more work to do on this head. Now, I'm going to get my darkest phyllo green and I'm going to push that right into the corners. All the way around the outside. I'm going to switch back to the phyllo green and just blend that all in so it smoothly trans transitions into the lightest right at the front. Okay, we're starting to see how he might look when he's finished now. I think I'll leave that for now. I'm going to move on to continuing this um, type of colouring onto this main part here of this shoulder area and down into his wings. So I will take my light phyllo green and I'm just going to put a little bit in the centre where, where I want the colour to be lightest. Avoiding those little dots there. And then we'll go for the phyllo green. Do the same thing this time. And avoiding putting any in the centre. Just blending it into where you've got that lightest colour. And the dark phyllo green, pushing it just around the outer edges. I think I might actually grab a little bit of this may green, and where you've got the lightest bits, I'm just going to put just a little layer of may green. Now, don't press at all, just brush the pencil tip over like so 
I hope the camera can pick this up, but I've just got a little layer of the light green on top of the water green, which I'll put over the top just to press it all down. All right, I like that. That's just warmed him up slightly, made it pop a little bit more. I'll do the same here with the May green. Just put it in the centre bit here where you've got the lightest. and just the water green over the top again. I'm just smoothing things out and where I find that the transition's a little bit sharp I'm just um, using, well this one I'm using the phthalo green just to smooth it all out. Good. Now I'm going to do the same for down his the wing casing down here. Just that main piece that runs down the centre with the patterns at either side. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to give it a go over this one more time. It's just not smooth enough for me. I'm being fussy. Okay. I'll just. I'm going to ignore the lines in the centre here and I'm just going to run down the whole entire thing with the light phthalo green. All the way down to the end. You'll notice I'm avoiding putting down anything too dark at present. I want to leave everything light enough for me to change and alter if I want to. I'll go in with the extreme darks at the end. All right, that's the light green down. We'll go for the phthalo green. And being careful, this is a bit fiddly, but being careful to avoid all the um, outside bits. Actually, you know what? I changed my mind. We will use the dark phthalo green. So pop your light phthalo green down, grab the dark and do this. I'm just thinking I wouldn't want to do this too many times. It's just a little bit fiddly and I'd like to have the dark down in the little in these little areas in between to make them really stand the pattern stand out. Now another thing you can do when colouring in all these heavily patterned area is just to ignore the pattern and, and colour straight over the top and just use the pattern as a, uh, a texture underneath or um, go over later on with a gel pen to pick out the bits of pattern and that's an easier way to do it if you don't want to be fiddling around too much but I like to keep my gel pen use down to just the white highlights so it's um, really up to you how you do it. Blend it in with the, um, with the light phthalo green there as you go and that gives him a nice shine. Just a little bit more of the light phthalo green I've missed here. That gives him a bit of a shimmer shine down his wing casing there just looks like the light phthalo green. Um, the idea is to make it look like a, a little band of lights reflecting off the wing casing, making it look a little bit, uh, giving the surface a bit of a rounded look. to take my phthalo green and just try to blend it in a little bit just being careful not to cross over into the very light areas so I want to preserve them. I'm just using the light, the phthalo green to blend in the dark phthalo green a little bit where the blend is a little bit um, a bit rough for my taste. Yeah. 
Now, so we're giving it a little bit of a warm tinge. Grab your May Green and once again just go down that centre bit with a very light layer of May Green just to. grasshopper feeling like a rounded creature instead of a flat creature. And just underneath where his um, big hind leg joins his body as well to give it a bit of shadow to help it feel like the leg is actually joined to the body and not floating above it. underneath where this middle leg joins as well. Okay, let's move down to his tail section. I'm going to do the same thing with these areas as well. These areas resemble with their stripes, um, these lines going down a broader area, resembles the belly here. And, then, and I'm going to um, continue with that by using the same colours here here as I've done here. This will help fill the um, to unite the creature so it makes it, it makes it look everything is unified in him. Like he's this, the same um, creature all the way through. It's a bit hard to describe what I mean. I know what I mean. Okay, hands up anybody who knows what I, what I mean. Or am I complete talking complete nonsense? Doing the same thing here uh, again with the water green. Uh, again, if you can't, don't have the water green, you put lay down a light layer of white first and then a light layer of the light phthalo green over the top to get the same effect. Each of these little parts. I'm just doing these segments here with the stripes. I'm not going into the pattern, but I'm ignoring the, um, the, the lines that go through these sections. I'm just colouring straight over the top and using those lines as a texture. Right, once you're satisfied with that, pick up your light thylo green to put in your shadows. Now the shadowy area here will be 
underneath this big leg and this will make the leg look like it's attached to the body so you just want a line of shadow with the light thylo blending into the lighter colour that you've laid down first. Now the shadows that you want here will be on the top of the grasshopper and just blend down. Blend sort of like just beyond that first um, line there. Now looking at this, I want to pop a little bit of a shading down the bottom as well. Not quite as much as I've got on the top here. But just along the bottom, just to suggest that it's a little bit in shadow. I might just use the, the light phyllo for now. You just want, a, just want a little bit here along the bottom. Think just on the other side, see where this leg is. I'll just make it a little bit darker around the outside of that leg, just so that the leg stands out a bit more. Just a touch down here, just to round out the feeling of this large abdomen area. There we go, and I might do the same for the thorax as well. we've got quite a lot of um, his main colours down we can see what direction we're going in I'm going to move up to this area here these little um, scale looking things and what I think I might do is the inside of these scales I'll go with the same colour treatment as I've done to the top carapace and then we'll think about what we're going to do for the lines outside the scales so with the top carapace, we, um, I think with these, I will begin with the light phyllo green and just put a little smudge of it in the centre of each of them. This is the light phyllo green. And then I'll go with the dark phyllo green and I'm going to go around the outside. Make them look a little bit jewelled, give them a bit, bit of a three-dimensional look. And there's the dark phyllo green. Sorry, I picked up the wrong one. I thought that looked a bit, a bit bluish. There we are. And just blend that into the light. Give it a nice bit of contrast there. Go back with the light phyllo green and just blend it in a little bit more. And then I'll pick up my may green and again I'll just brighten that centre with the may green just to give it a slightly more yellowish look. Sort of just to make it pop a bit, bit better with the contrast. Okay, now we've established this scaly pattern here will have the this combination of colours. Oops, wrong one, that one. This combination of colours. So what I'm going to do is anywhere where I see that scaly pattern, that centre bit that's being surrounded by a line of white or a loop of white, I'm going to colour in using that sequence, which is of course the light phthalo green first, then the dark phthalo green around the outside, blend again a little bit with the light phthalo green to smooth it out, and then add a touch of the may green to bring out a little bit of contrast colour to make it pop. I'm going to go all over the grasshopper now and do that wherever I see this sort of scale design. And you can follow along with me to see where I do it, but uh, I think I'll let the music play for a little while now while we get into this. Let's get into the zone of colouring. I miss this little scale down here, so I'll do that and I'll include it with the next, the next slot. There's little scales around his head. There are 
scales like this going down his body, on his leg and on his abdomen. So we're going to work our way around the whole thing. Smooth out his face a little bit. Oh, I could fuss around smoothing and touching up forever. I'm a bit like that. Okay, let's start. It's harder to do with the smaller scales, don't worry, just do your best, it'll all look good in the, in the long run. Right, this last bit here of the tail, I've decided I will not use the May Green on it because I want to make this, ta this abdomen section stand out as being different from the, car the carapace here, the um, covers to the wings and the legs. So I'm going to leave them without this yellowish tone that the May Green provides. Okay, now we have filled in, I'll pull back a little bit, there we go, we've filled in most of the main areas of our grasshopper here and what we're left now with is a lot of these little patterned areas and this is where you can go a little bit mad. What I want to do is to add colours that will contrast with the grasshopper so that he stands out a bit more from the background. So the colour that contrasts best with green is red. I'd also like to put a bit of a gold yellow in as well and because there are 
is purple in the flowers here. I like to use a little bit of purple on him too, just to seat him into the background so he looks a part of the picture. It's a trick that you use with colouring, is that when you use one colour, you make sure that you use it in several different places. To, and it helps to bind all the elements of the picture together, so it looks like one complete picture, not something that looks like it's just sitting on top of everything else. So, I want a gold colour to do um, some of the detail work with the grasshopper. So I'll look at my gold, my yellowy goldy type colours, and see if I can find one that I like. First one I'm going to reach for is the green gold here. Green gold, and that, that is going to be a beautiful colour to go with that. It's a, it's a gold colour, but it's got a slightly greenish, um, sort of like a, a coolish tint. Now another colour that I like to use with gold is Naples ochre, is also good, this is a bit more yellow as well. So because it's lighter and brighter, that can be my sort of like lighter version of the colour and that can be more my shadowy version of the colour. These two blend really well if you want a gold colour, the Naples um, ochre and the green gold. It's great. Good for if you're colouring gold things as well, that combination. And I'd perhaps, you know, pair that with a lighter, sort of um, warmer yellow too. Let's put this on him. Now I also want, as I said, some red as well. So I'll choose my red, deep scarlet red. I'll stick some of that in him as well. And uh, the colour, the purple colour that we used, I think that was the blue violet. So there's the purple colour we can use as well to brighten him all up and sort of bind him in. Now I'm not going to go too mad with these. I just want to put him in tiny areas just to give him a little bit of pop and to make seat him into the background amongst all the other colours. Because we've got such tiny areas to work with, you want nice sharp points. And I think this is where the um, polychromus, which tends to hold a point better, uh, works um, well in comparison to softer pencils like the Color Soft or the Premier. I'm going to start off with the yellow because I think what I'd like to do is where you've got these white areas, I think I'm going to use a tinge it a little bit of yellow and I'll see what happens, see if I like it. And this is this edges to all these green scaly areas that we've used. Now the most outer edge, put your brighter yellow, which is your dark Naples ochre. So I'm doing right there. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So the dark Naples ochre I'm putting here. And then I will take the green gold, which is a darker shade, and use it as the shading where the the end of these little arches sort of like ground here with the next layer of scales. There we go, and that one's in shadow, so I'll just do the whole thing with the um, green gold. Oh, this green gold colour, so it was a late addition to my set. I got and I thought, why did I buy this colour sooner? Because it's pretty useful. There we are, blend it in a loop. Okay, I think I like that and I'll continue that to fill in all of these loops, these uh, arches and these little V's that um, encircles all of these, these uh, scale-like um, pieces or scale-like shapes. This is where uh, Hannah's drawings get quite fiddly and said you some people just choose to ignore the pattern and just colour straight over the top and that looks really good too. But in this case with the grasshopper being a little insect, which is often, look I'll do that with this part of his face too around the bottom here and you know what I'm going to do that with the eye as well so around the top of the eye I'll put the lighter color and maybe just a little bit down here and then on the sides I'll do the darker color
Okay, that's all the little bits of gold lining that I've done. Now, I've drawn back from the picture to show you something. One of the things that I noticed is that I feel that the grasshopper needs a little bit more light and dark contrast. He's got all these leaves around him with the very dark tips and bases, which we used the uh, deep cobalt green for. So what I'm going to do to marry him into the picture a bit better, I'm going to use the deep cobalt green in green in the little corners and crevices to give him a little bit more of a light dark contrast and to seat him better into the picture. So the deep cobalt green and I'll close up again and I'll show you exactly where I think on the head is most important around his eye here and just around the base of where the gold was. Make sure it's nice and pointy. don't have to press too hard. Sometimes when you're putting pencil on you don't realize how much you're actually putting on because it doesn't feel like very much. If you just, like I'm only using a light to medium pressure here and I'm just gently making circles where I can to gently blend in a bit, a bit more of a dark contrast and straight around that eye is important particularly around these big areas. Now if you do this, the first thing you notice is the little spots jump out a bit more after you put this deep cobalt in. I'm going to go all around the outside of his eye there. Yeah, I think so. And down this little bottom bit, following the line of this gold that lines the bottom of his head. There we go. Now I feel like he's better seated into the picture with this. Again, I'm going to go around now with the deep cobalt and just press it into the little corner or shadow of the gold. So wherever there is gold that borders onto the green, just press a little bit of this deep cobalt green. And already I think I'm really liking that effect. Giving him a bit more definition. Right, that looks a bit better to me. Um, he's not quite as bright. He's got more contrast with the lighter colours and the darker colours. And I think I think it's time we now we did his antenna. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I think I'll make it very dark at the tip using the um, the deep cobalt green and just gradually 
make it lighter and lighter until we hit the lightest colour here down at the base. And I'll pretty much do the same for these little blobbly bits I think that stick out here. Okay, we'll start with the lightest colour. I'm just going to, before I do that, because I'm using a light colour here and I've got a little bit of bleed from the orange onto his, onto his antenna, I'll just clean that up first. I don't want the colour to be muddied by the orange. An orange mixed with a green makes a rather dirty brown colour. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that. Yeah, that's better. Okay, now we will start, bring that across here so you can see, um, with the water green at the base. Or again, if you don't have this colour, use the white and then put the light phthalo green over the top. Okay, light phthalo green's next. And now the phthalo green. Just putting it on fairly lightly here. Blend it all in with the water green. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a shine on the top here, so I'll just put a little bit of the water green there. Actually, I'll swap that over and make it the light phthalo green. When we um, do the final touch up with the white gel pen, I'm going to add a couple of little dots here. There's the dark phthalo green, so I'll go around the outside of that. Blend it in. So give it a round look, give it a bit of dimension. And finally the deep cobalt green for right around the outside. Blend that in. And that'll make the end of his antenna look like little round bobbles. Just extend that down a little bit. And that contrasts beautifully with this um, lighter orangey yellow that we've got as the background. Blend that in there. Now what have we got left to do? Lots of these little um, little decorative bits now, which as I said before, we're going to look at using the, uh, the purple and the red for just little highlights here. And I'm thinking I might leave these little rows of arches, the tiny ones, white. But what I'll do with them is instead of leaving them flat white, I'll take another colour and just put a little bit of shading at either side so that, um, I'll show you what I mean here, these little arches down here. What I thought I would do with them, instead of colouring these little arches, lines of arches, is leave them white but um, put a little bit of um, another colour in at either side just to suggest some shading so it doesn't look flat and it fits in with the round curve of the abdomen that we've achieved there. Okay, first of all let's pick in to spot in some of this uh, red and purple and I wanted to make this mark on his face red to stand out like that and I'm actually going to use purple to shade it a little bit as it goes up it's just a little bit of purple on the end there I'm not using my little hand guard I haven't used that much have I Try not to smudge everything. And a bit more red over the top. Now his eye, I want to be black. Oh, where's my black? I've got the black here. And I want to colour in the whole eye black. Jet black. Just lighter in the centre there. And then getting darker as you go out. I might keep that or might make it black altogether. I'll just make it, because I want it jet black, I'm quite happy to press down to put this black on. Because I'm not really going to put any other colours laid over the top. And I'll just get a little lighter as I go in and just leave it lightest right here on this upper curve. So it looks like light is hitting him from above a little bit. And just give the eye some dimension so it doesn't sit flat. Now these little little dots and things. I might put the red around these. 
decorate him up a little bit. Red on these. Just the bases of those arches. And then between the arches I'll put the purple. Yeah, you see he's looking quite decorative. So this is the difference you can achieve with colouring each of these tiny little details and all just going over the top of them and with one colour to make it just look like a, um, a texture. Either way works, but this way yeah, I think you get a bit more of a fun result. Get to play with all the colours. Small ones inside the triangles, I'll make purple. See, he's really starting to pop up like that. He's going to look spectacular when we add the little white really, um, really sharp for this bit. Okay, as so like I said, I want to leave this line of white like a frill. So to shade it a little bit, I'm not going to use the green, but I will try a muted green, I think. What have we got here? So it's olive green yellowish. That's number one. Seven five, kind of a cross between the bright green and the yellow. Now I'm going to apply this. As you see, how you've got this line of um, frill, white frill here, it looks very flat. I want to make it look like it's curved round a little bit around his body, and so I'm just going to add a little bit at the top, very lightly going down. Don't press, and the same from the bottom up. And that will just and go up a little bit. So it still looks white, but it looks white with a shadow on it. It's tricky trying to keep things that are white looking white. And I'll do that wherever I see this frill, particularly right down here, where you've got a lot of these frills. I'm going to, what I'll do now is I'll work my way down the grasshopper, adding the highlights and that shadow. Those little, sorry, those little coloured bits of um, purple and red. Now, remembering that we are using the Deep Scarlet Red 219 and the Blue Violet 137. These little triangles in between the big triangles, I'll make red. If you followed this tutorial so far, you should have something that looks like this. So see, our grasshopper is now done. It's time to add those little details and special effects that makes the picture pop. The first thing that strikes me is these little circles on the flowers. I was considering doing them white with a gel pen but now I'm looking at them I think it would look rather effective if I actually coloured them in black. We'll see how we go with that. So that is each of these little little seeds on the um, little seed shapes on each of the flowers. So we'll go ahead with that and see how what happens making sure that your black is really sharp so you can get them in get it into those tiny little spaces just give a little wriggle of black put that card underneath me into each of those to the flowers. Now I think it's getting close to the time when we bring out the big guns. And when I say the big guns I mean the white gel pen. 
I'm just debating with these little um, seeds, I guess, floating around in the air. I'm thinking about colouring them brown and then outlining perhaps in the, in the white. Let's see, I'll do a couple and we'll see how I like it. Okay, you can just watch and um, then decide whether you want to copy it or not. I'll try the walnut brown. I'll do a couple up here and see if I like it or not. Geez, it's a really tiny walnut brown. I'm going to have to replace him soon. Okay, that's that. I'll grab out my white gel pen where I can find it. Here's where I keep all my other art supplies. It's a little... Uh, pull it out so I don't look so... Okay, here we go. It's a Derwin pouch. It was given to me for my birthday. And inside I've just got everything sort of set out here. More of my drawing stuff than my um, colouring stuff. But somewhere I've got a... There we go. The Uniball Sigma white gel pen. Tuck all my drawing stuff back out the way. Right, okay, now I want a little bit of scrap paper because the Uniball Signos, they tend to dry and clog up at the ends. I'll just zoom in again so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Just make sure this little baby is awake. Yep, and we're off and ready. Now what I'm thinking about doing is just outlining it a little bit. Oops, don't do too well with that one, do I? Now the nice thing about um, using the gel pen is that if you don't like it, wait till it dries and then scratch it off with your thumb and start again. So that allows me a little time to experiment. What do you think? You carry on with whatever you liked best out of that, whether to add the walnut brown first and circle it or whether to just colour the whole thing in. I just add a little sprinkle around it. I think I like having the walnut brown on it and doing just a little dab at the side to make it look like it's a seed. I wait for that to dry and I'll scrape all that off and then I will redo it the way I like. In the meantime I'll go ahead and I'll just colour in the rest of these and pop a little highlight on the tip of each one. I think I like that best. Like that too. Just putting a little bit of brown at the end of those. Um, don't think I'll bother though. But that was nice. Just putting a bit of brown at the end of those um, flower coverings. I don't know what they're called. Okay, so I'm just going to colour all of these little um, seeds in brown and I'm just going to put a little bit of a highlight on the tip of each one to suggest maybe it's just catching the light right there on the top right hand corner. Sort of like what would be the corner of that little seed. So, so they're all the highlight is all placed in round about the same place 
on each of the seeds. Pen's curled up, our uh, paper's curled up a bit. Right, I'll bend it back into shape once we're finished. Yeah, I like that actually. That's, that's nice, it's a bit different. Mm. Don't know if I need so many little dots around it. I might just do a little sprinkle of dots in between. Not many. Don't want to overwhelm it. Just little groups of three or five. Find odd numbers is usually best. Smeared that one. I'll have to hold the paper down for it. Yep, I like that effect. I'm going to use that for the entire picture. So all these little dots in the uh, the walnut brown. And then the little dot of the white gel pen at the top sort of right hand side of the dot and then a sprinkling of little dots in groups of three or five around them and the odd one or two here or there. Okay, this piece is starting to look finished, but I think what we do need is perhaps a little bit more sparkle on our grasshopper to make him look a little bit more shiny and make him stand out a bit from his background now that we've added all of the white speckles. So we're going to do pretty much the same with him. 
what I'm going to do is we'll start off with his eye. I'm going to add a few little, two more little dots there to make it look extra shiny. And then I think what we might do is along these, these little um, scales, I called them before, just add a little bit of, just add a little bit of a flick of the pen there, just to give that a little shiny, kind of like it's, that's a shiny surface and it's just catching the reflection of the light there. Same with his face here. Just basically make him look a bit shinier. He's done. There we go. Let's have a look. Right at the top, just add a little dot and a dash. Dot and a dash. Whoops, that's a bit too much of a dash there. Just cut that dot down with my thumbnail. There we go. Okay. And there we have the finished picture of our grasshopper. I hope you've enjoyed this colour along. I hope you also apply the techniques that I've shown you about planning to your own coloured pictures and I would love to see your results. I'm on Instagram, just hashtag me if you upload a picture of completed grasshopper or pictures of your own that you've done using the uh, planning technique that I've shown you. Anyway, I hope you're having fun with any other colouring adventures that you're currently on or any other arty adventures altogether. And until next time, happy colouring! I hope you're enjoying any colouring adventures that you are currently on. And until next time, happy colouring!